Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about programming languages and my opinion about the future. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, in your opinion, what do you think is the future of programming languages? Do you think we will have more generations than paradigms of programming languages? Yes, I think we will. But I don't think it's going to matter all that much. Uh, my suspicion is that what's happening right now is that this sort of era of that we have, I don't even know how many programming languages we have right now, is going to do the thing that usually happens in any like capitalist system or anything like that in business. It's the same sort of thing, right? So you have these groups who I mean, for everything. They have an idea, there's a concept, there's like a boom of some sort if in business or politics or religion or anything like that. And all of a sudden everybody gets very inspired by this new cool thing, which in this case it's programming, and then people want to start contributing to it. So if people start experimenting wildly with it and they create a bunch of programming languages and like with different perspectives and benefits and ideolo ideolo ideologies and and you know angles to the whole thing and so you get a very diverse ecosystem very quickly what happens later is that the main players like the successful uh, areas such as even in the web space if you you know if you remember just a few years back everybody i mean everybody has a website website today but if you count how many websites you use on a regular basis it should probably not be more than a handful and i suspect that the same thing is going to happen for programming i mean in a sense it's already happened if you think about how many programming languages are out there but and then you look at the job postings how many are actually being requested the ratio is already sort of established. The top five languages are like top seven or something like that. They don't change all that much. It ha does happen, and the I would say the major change that has happened in the last five, ten years has been that the programming language TypeScript has made it up all the way to like the top. Like I, I'm not sure exactly, but it's actually funny. I don't think that a lot of people looked at that. There was a few years back. The uh, Go became this big uh, internet success. But if you look at the actual adoption of Go, it was almost nothing. If you look at the adoption of TypeScript, it went up 20, uh, 20 positions on the Stack Overflow top list or something like that. And today I will go as far as to say that I'm not sure what the next report is going to show, but I would be extremely surprised if TypeScript isn't one of the top languages because at this point it's not a requirement to know TypeScript if you want to do JavaScript, but it's getting to that point where it's like if you know JavaScript, you are expected, or rather if you're supposed to work with JavaScript uh, in a serious fashion, you are almost expected to know TypeScript. It's not there just yet, but it's getting there. And I think that that is what's going to happen and continue happening. It's the sort of, it's the same sort of phenomenon we see in everything that gets sort of popularized. Everybody competes for shares of the market, if that makes sense, but there's only a handful who make it to be so big that they, they they sort of dominate the entire market. You can never, and I, I truly believe it is naive for us to think that there's going to be a one programming language that just rules them all. Because we can't even, I mean humans don't work that way. Even if you create the most perfect mainstream thing in the world, there's going to be an out group who say that that is too mainstream because they don't want to be part of the they don't want to conform, or if that makes sense. So they conform to something else, and then they call themselves non-conformist. You just ask the goth kids about that, uh, how and so forth. Uh, it's it, it's never going to be like a one unified thing, I, th I think. But I think that the selection is going to drop and dwindle down to the thing that really matters, and that is the what are the platforms using. If you take as an example, there is still not a serious contender for in terms of JVM languages for Java. Everybody who has been trying to kill Java as a of the, like Scala, Groovy, uh, Kotlin, etc. So like none of them have been successful at actually doing that. And that is not because nobody 
is trying to do it. Is they're trying to create a JVM-based type of solution, but it's it's proving very difficult. And I don't think that that's going to go away at all, because people are always trying to figure out new things. And I think this is a very healthy thing. It's just that we have to re kind of realize that the thing that really makes a difference in programming is what is what is the platform that you are working on? What is the simplest, most mainstream, yet balancing with performance and all of this other sort of like the these sort of things? What is the thing that is most productive for you to use in order to work on that platform? Because uh, as web developers, I mean, we we can hate on JavaScript all we want, but it is the web language of the world. It is the thing that everybody is using. Same thing it used to be, like, I mean, we, um, we, uh, Microsoft as well. You can hate C Sharp as much as you want. It doesn't change because the value of what you are doing as a software developer comes from the fact that this platform is a product sold to a customer. You build something in terms of software for that customer. They can use it on their computer. Mac OS, the same, all of this sort of stuff is exactly the same thing. You, this is where you sort of delude yourself as a software developer into thinking that it's about the software. It's not about the software. The coding language or the thing that you are making is down to what is the computer operating system running? Like what is the application? That that's all that really that really matters, and that's what why I think that this uh, this the state we are in right now is it's gonna be it's gonna be around. But I think that the the gap between what people talk about using and what people actually use are using it's still there today. The only people who really seriously, in my opinion, at the very least, based on what I've seen who talk about these other obscure languages. Oh, they are the evangelists. These are the people who work in, like they have created their own little illusion bubble where they seem to believe that Haskell is a viable option for mainstream programming and uh, like Rails is gonna make a comeback, uh, like, depending on how you look at it, like, or PHP is gonna make a comeback, Python is gonna take over, etc., etc. Like there are all these sort of thoughts and opinions about how things are working. But the, the people who actually take Take the time to look at what the job postings are all about, and don't do things like, "Oh, view JS has more stars on GitHub than React, therefore it is better and like a more popularized," which was a thing a while back. Well, yeah, if you look at the GitHub stars, but if you look at the job posting and adoption in companies, it's like almost not. It's not even funny. It's not a competition for most regions, and so this. I think is going to continue for quite some time, but just as classes in society, the gap between the people who are the languages who sort of dominate the market and everybody else is just going to go to the point where, well, it's more a personal preference to pick languages that are not the main languages anymore. That's what I believe is going to happen. So what I want you to take away from this is that the future for programming languages, I think, is going to be that things are sort of going to continue the way they are right now. I think that uh, there are a few of the old time languages that are going to find some sh serious challenges or like they're going to find contenders. The Rust would be one of my favorite ones that uh, that will be, I think, is uh, going to show, prove itself to hopefully very quietly make itself uh, into one of those uh, higher end languages. And there might come a language in here and there that is going to like sort of disrupt how we do things and so forth. But the thing that really matters usually is what are the platform needs of a language? Because you can reinvent the wheel a million times because you can create Python, Ruby, or like uh, other combinations of languages that so you can add, you can create a Scala language or Groovy language and so forth, or Kotlin, etc., etc. But the thing that really matters is the platform that has been created, what language has that platform sort of chosen? What is the main thing? What is the most accessible mainstream like in terms of like getting people who can work with that platform, uh, who still feel comfortable? Etc. Etc. That is the thing that dictates everything, and that's as an example why Java, JavaScript is probably not going to go anywhere for the web for quite some time, because it is simply the main thing designed to work on the web platform. 
And that is the thing that a lot of software developers forget. So when you have a contender, as a contender to anything that is mainstream, you have to bring something to the table that is basically impossible to copy or like just to kind of, because the main language they're going to defend themselves as well. They're just going to, if you have a good idea, they're just going to copy you. So you really have to bring something that is practically unheard of or something that is so strong that people realize that, wow, this thing, this is going to make the difference. Because if you're not in the market making a real disruptive change, you're just going to fizzle out most likely where the bigger languages are going to take what they can from your ideas, mm -hmm. embrace it and sort of just keep the base of people who are already using them. Yeah, they're going to keep them. And so that's why I tell people that a language such as say Rust, who bring who actually brings that sort of disruptive uh, s structure to lower level language programming, well, that there you have a potential. But Golang or similar to other languages or just sort of making yet another web way of doing web without actually bringing any you know, of that really disruptive power that really solves really pro real problems that nobody else can sort of solve at this point. It's harder for such a language to take over from C Sharp or Java or these sorts of languages. Have a great day.